you may never relate to a near-death experience by drowning, but you probably have shared the same sentiment in one way or another, that feeling of helplessness, being at a place where your efforts do not make a dent in your situation, and praying that God would come to your aid in some form, perhaps as a stranger, an event, luck, or even the devil himself. <laughs> help is help. You could care less about where it's coming from. You are at a point where you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Whether it's your child going hungry, unable to pay your mom's medical bills, whatever the case is, it's in such moments where the end seems to truly justify the means. At the start of any economic activity, you need capital, resources in some sort, but you have nothing, no money, no skills. And even if you had both, these things take time, time that you don't have. Let's think about it. Are you really stuck? Do you really want to say that you have no way out of your financial pit? Of course you do. You've known the answer this whole time right from the very beginning, only held back by the veil of morality. And once you've lifted it, all hell breaks loose. Money starts coming in. You could finally breathe again, literally. You quickly become the envy of your friends, the esteem of your family, and the worry of your mother. We don't know how you've suddenly struck it big, but we don't care. It's money. And by mere association, we are also beneficiaries from your labors. <laughs> Sooner or later, the realities of the nightlife start to register. You barely are awake at your day job. The constant fear of infection. And of course, the constant fear of the police. Because according to the Penal Code Act, Chapter 14, Section 139, you risk imprisonment of up to seven years and the eternal shame that you would bring about onto your family. And having almost been caught more than once, you start to refine your trade. As any good and serious business person, legal or otherwise, you want as little attention from the authorities as possible. And in our case, it's the police we want to avoid. During your time on the street, you had come to learn about what certain massage parlors in town actually do, the extra services as they like to call them. And so, you seek to join one of the high-end shops in town. That has been recommended from a colleague of yours from the streets. Referrals are, are an important currency in this industry. They keep you all safe and screen out bad actors such as the police, investigators, news reporters and so on. Soon a brothel, I mean massage parlor, recruits you and once again your moonlighting business is back on track. And this time, with benefits, we're talking security, hygiene and a steady income. Bank teller by day, massage therapist by night. Like when our parents and teachers say that we should always work hard, you took it to heart, literally. Problem is, after some time you want more and are unhappy with the high fees or taxes that you pay to your pimp, I mean shop manager, who has a sweet tongue in convincing you that the high fees pay the police to turn a blind eye on the activities carried out at the shop, keeps the police, the customers, and themselves, and anyone else concerned happy. Did we not mention that you're such a good and serious business person? Months have passed by and you've learned the ties of the trade and you decide to go solo. Not to start another massage parlor, no. That's all people thinking. You're a digital native and fully understand what that means and the potential of it. The opportunities are endless. Through your online profiles, a lot of sims, I mean people, call you to their houses, hotels, trips and so on. They are willing to pay bugs for your company, explicit videos or better yet, your live action videos. All without the former friction of you paying your pimp, I mean middleman, the risk of arrest or the sickness from the night cold that you endured. The risk of infection is still there and half the men in the city know you intimately, but your moral compass is beyond repair at this point. The marketing is genius. All you do is upload heavily filtered photos from one of your trips or luxury hotels and everyone wants a piece of you, even though you've been careful enough not to expose your face the whole time. The demand is very high that you start referring your low paying customers to your colleagues, which only drives up the price for your company. And it doesn't stop. The gifts, the trips, the favors, your family's financial future is all secured. At this point, it's no longer about trying to make ends meet, no. You quickly crash through the peak of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's now about financing your lifestyle, making powerful connections, starting a legit business, such as a high-end jewelry shop that can launder your illegal gains. You are at the top of your game, a popular socialite, and receiving invitation after invitation to speak and inspire people at business conferences. Life couldn't get any better.
Unfortunately, the friends that you left in the 9 to 5 job can't stop asking how you actually made it so quickly. Some have invented conspiracies of how you joined the Illuminati. But all you can do is lay out some classic bullshit motivation speech about working hard and trusting God. And maybe it's not because you're selfish. Beyond them judging you, they wouldn't have the heart to go through what you have. And you wouldn't want to be the reason they joined the practice either. Because not everyone wins in this industry. Some are killed, some are arrested, some are physically violated, and some catch incurable infections. And so you lie to your friends for the sake of their dignity and yours. Now amid all the glamour from social media and in business, the reality remains the constant fear of being discovered by your family. But at this point the power you yield is so immense. No one talks at family meetings when you speak. We also live in constant fear of offending you because we have everything to gain from you. And as for the outsiders, who are they to judge? And how different are they from you? You are all in the same boat after all. You are all paid for intimacy, except that they hide it behind the veil of marriage. You gotta know how to be strong and to put your foot down. Now I do know while working there, it helped me be a strong woman. A lot of people, you know, and even my boyfriend today, he still tries to say shit like, you know, you working there made you less of a woman. No, it didn't. It may have made me less of a woman because of what I did, but even then, it taught me something that my father didn't teach me, nor my, nor my poor mother, you know?